Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to upgrade the memory in a late 2012 through late 2013 model 21 and a half inch iMac. This is a rather involved process requiring you to disassemble much of your iMac. It's recommended that you watch this video in its entirety before attempting this installation. We've already gathered our materials, shut down and unplugged the iMac and are working on a soft static free surface. We're now ready to begin. The display on the iMac is held in place with an adhesive around the edges which you'll have to cut apart. This is a tricky process which runs the risk of cracking the display, so you'll need to be very careful. Starting on one of the lower corners, insert the screen removal tool between the glass and the chassis. Work along all the edges of the iMac, taking care not to push out on the glass. All we're doing is cutting the tape holding the display on, not prying the glass away. The process may take a little bit, and you may need to go over sections multiple times, so be patient. The corners may be a little tricky. Make sure the tool is right up against the chassis to make sure all the tape is cut. When near the camera, you may feel some bumps as the tape is thin here, so take care not to damage the camera itself. Continue around the iMac until you reach the other side. You may now lay the iMac face up on your work surface and attach the suction cups to the upper corners. Do one last check to make sure you've loosened all the adhesive around the edges of the iMac. Then lift the glass part way up using the suction cups. Inside near the top, you'll need to detach two cables. For the first, simply slide it out of its socket by its tabs. For the second cable, first lift up on this plastic tab to unlock the connection, then slide it out. You can then angle the display the rest of the way up and remove the adhesive holding the bottom of the display. Simply grab the tab on each side of the screen and slowly pull it towards the center until it comes free. And you should be able to remove the display and set it aside. We need to get at the back of the main logic board. To do that, we'll first need to remove a number of other pieces, starting with the hard drive. To remove the hard drive, first remove these four screws. You should then be able to remove the drive retainers and lift the drive out of the bay. You can then disconnect the SATA cables from the drive and set it aside. Next, we're going to remove the fan. The first step is to unplug the fan connector from the logic board by sliding it out of its slot by the tabs. Then, remove these three Torx T10 screws. You should now be able to lift the fan up and out of the iMac. Next, we need to remove the power board. The first thing to do is detach these two cables. Both of these cables slide out of their connectors in the same way as the others. Next, remove these two Torx T10 screws holding the board in place. You can now work the board out. This is somewhat tricky as you'll need to lift up on the plastic flange on the chassis to make enough room for the board to slide out. Next, you'll need to disconnect the cable on the underside of the logic board. There's a small clip on it which you'll need to push down on in order to pull it out. You can then remove a similar cable in the chassis of the iMac. You can now set the power assembly aside. Next, we can remove the hard drive bay itself. It's held in place by a single Torx T10 screw.
Once it's removed, you can then move the bay out of the way. Then, remove these wires from underneath this large metal clip. Now we need to remove the four Torx T8 screws holding in the heatsink. It will help tremendously if your screwdriver head is lightly magnetized to hold onto the screw. If not, you can always use the tweezers that came with your newer tech kit to help pull the screws out. Once the screws are removed, you'll need to peel off the piece of adhesive plastic attached to the non-fan end of the heatsink and set it aside. Next, we need to move this assembly off to the side of the iMac. First, remove the antenna cable from its channel on the side. Next, undo the two Torx T10 screws holding it in place. Then, simply move the assembly up and over to the side. Now it's time to disconnect all the cables from the logic board, starting with these four antenna cables. To remove these, gently lift straight up on the connectors until they pop loose. Be careful when doing this, these connectors are very fragile. Next, detach these two cables. For the camera cable, lift up on the tab to unlock the small handle then slide the connector out of its socket. Remove the speaker cable by gripping the tabs and simply sliding it out. Next, undo this connector by simply lifting upwards on it. The last cable to detach is this speaker cable, which slides out of its socket like the other one. Now we can remove the four Torx T10 screws that hold the board in place. Gently pull the logic board out of the iMac, being careful not to catch on any of the surface mount components. The SD card reader will be blocked by one of the screw mounts, so you'll need to angle the board to the side to get around it. You can now remove the board and flip it over. The memory is located here. To remove the top module, simply press outward on the retaining clips until it pops up. Then, slide it out of its slot. Repeat the process for the lower module. The memory modules have a notch that lines up with the pin in each of the memory slots. Align the two and slide a memory module into the lower slot at an angle until it's fully seated. Then, push down on the outer edge of the module to lock it into place. Repeat the process for the top module. You may now place the logic board back into the iMac, again being careful not to accidentally damage any of the surface mounted components it may take a little maneuvering to get it to fit into place. After making sure no cables are trapped underneath, you can replace the four screws that hold the logic board in place. You can then reattach the cables, starting with this speaker cable, which just slides into place. This connector simply lines up over its socket on the logic board and snaps together. Next are the other speaker cable and the camera cable. Slide the camera cable into its socket, then lock it into place with a small handle. The speaker cable simply slides back into place like the other one. Finally, we can reattach the antenna cables. These should have remained in order. Simply line the connectors up and press them together.
we can now move this assembly back into place and tighten the screws to secure it. Then, replace the antenna cable in its channel along the side of the unit. Finally, use a screwdriver to gently tug on the fabric loops to make sure none are stuck underneath. Next, we need to replace the heatsink screws. The two screws towards the bottom of the iMac are slightly thicker than the others, so we'll start with those. Then, the slightly thinner screws can go in the remaining two spots. Finally, place the plastic cover back in place over the heatsink vent. The residual adhesive should allow it to stick. If the wires on the back of the drive bay came loose, you'll need to reroute them. First, route the thinner cable through the guides. Then, the thicker one. Set the bay into place and tighten the screw part way to hold it while you make sure the cables aren't pinched underneath. You can then tighten the screw fully and run the two SATA cables and the speaker cable under the metal clip by the heatsink, adjusting them so that they sit out of the way. We can now replace the power board. First, slide this small cable into its socket in the chassis until it clicks into place. Then, do the same with the cable going to the logic board. You can now maneuver the board into place, being careful not to catch it on the plastic flange on the chassis. You may also need to push the logic board power cable out of the way underneath so that the board can lay flat. Once you have it in place, you can secure it with the two Torx T10 screws. Finally, reattach this cable to the logic board, and this one to the power board. You can now attach the SATA cables to the hard drive, Then set the hard drive itself into the bay. Place the drive retainer with the flat edge into place, making sure not to pinch the wire, and secure it with the two medium-sized screws. Do the same with the other side. The side over the power board takes the long screw, and the smallest screw goes in the remaining hole. The last thing to replace should be the fan. Set the fan into place and secure it using its three Torx T10 screws. You can then reattach it to the logic board by simply sliding its connector into place. Now it's time to replace the adhesive that holds the display in place. First, peel up any of the adhesive remaining on the iMac. It should just peel off. Then, do the same to the display itself. Along the top edge, though, you will want to start in the middle of each side so that you don't accidentally peel off the ceiling tape on the display itself. 
Next, we need to put the display tape pieces in place, following the placement instructions on the sheet that came with your kit. The piece numbers will follow clockwise from the upper left corner. Peel off the backing of each piece and set it in place using some small screwdrivers or other thin tool to align the holes in the tape with the holes in the iMac frame. Once you have all the pieces set, you can then peel off the backing on the other side to expose the adhesive that will attach the display. Set the display along the bottom edge, as flush with the lip and as centered as possible, but don't let it close yet as we need to reconnect the video cables. Reattach the lower cable by sliding the connector into its socket and locking it into place with the handle. Then, simply slide the last connector into its socket. You can now carefully lower the display into place, making sure you have the edges lined up correctly. Gently squeeze along the edges to make sure the adhesive sticks. You can now remove the suction cups. Then use the microfiber cloth to remove any fingerprints or suction cup marks. 